Welcome to the Mojo Podcast with me, Richard Stokes. Wow, what a crazy time we are living through. Uh, 2020 will never ever be forgotten. And in these unprecedented and frankly extremely worrying times, there's obviously lots going on for all of us in our minds. And focusing on our mental health is incredibly important. Um, I'm making best I can with uh, what's going on in my business and my commitment is fully to the podcast. Uh, I'm hoping it brings some inspiration, entertainment, tips and even maybe some solutions to whatever your situation is right now. Now, This week's episode, although it was recorded a few weeks before the crisis hit, seems incredibly appropriate. It's all about energy. Energy is at the core of my mojo and many of the people I've interviewed so far have also mentioned energy being important to their mojo. So I wanted to go deeper on the subject of energy and why it's foundational to our mojo and to explore what's going on for us and how we can increase our energy and therefore our mojo. So of course I asked someone I've known for a while who happens to be a global expert on energy and how individuals and businesses can increase their energy. Chris Barris brown is the founder of Upping Your Elvis, a consultancy who embed a human, energetic and creative working culture to create healthy and happy businesses and also the founder of the charity Talk It Out, which you'll hear lots about in this episode. He's an author, keynote speaker, an uber-creative mind, amazing facilitator, and all-round good guy. We talk about the four key states of energy, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, how each affects us, and how you can be better in tune with each state, as they all matter, and they all help you understand where you are and what you can do to boost your mojo. We talk about things like napping, getting into nature, taking your full lunch break, and of course, Chris's passion area of walking and talking. I truly believe all the tips Chris imparts are useful at any time, but vital to us right now, living under lockdowns, quarantine, and restriction. Wherever you are right now, you'll be affected, and I hope this episode gives you some inspiration and some really practical help to keep your energy up and your mojo flowing at this incredible time of change. As ever, please do share this episode with anyone you think it might benefit. And can I ask you to leave that five-star rating and write a short review, as the Apple Podcast algorithm just loves them and means my humble podcast will be more discoverable for more people. Please do stay safe and well, follow good advice and stay positive. This too shall pass. And now on to today's episode. So welcome back to the Mojo podcast. It gives me tremendous pleasure to introduce Chris Barras-Brown to everyone, the listeners of the podcast. And Chris, how are you today? I am fantastic. It is a Monday. We've just had half term. I am glad to be back at work. (laughs) It's not often you say you're glad to be back at work, but I'm getting this sense of half term malaise from a few parents at the moment. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's some great, great sides to it, but um, it's uh, we, we we didn't go anywhere this year, and uh, my kids are teenagers now, and um, you spend all this time going, no, I'll, I'll be there for you, and actually, all they want is you to drive. So I've been a taxi driver for a week, and I quite like using my brain again today. So we are back, kicking back into work mode. So yeah. Chris, on that on that basis, and I, I always start with uh, I like to get some data points from people. So out of 10 then, where, where is your mojo today on this Monday? Oh, um, I'm, I'm striking a good nine, I'd say. Um, so um, I think you know, I could be a little bit better, uh, largely because the sleep didn't come so easily last night. But beyond that, um, you know, I've got great intention for the week. I'm very excited about what's going on. Um, I've been looking forward to talking to you for ages, Richard. So, you know, I'm feeling bouncy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> bouncy. Oh, I like that. I like that. So it's, it's, it's a good nine out of 10. And honestly, I've, you know, I've known you for a, a, a little while and I've probably never, in my, in my take, not known you being much lower than that. Um, but what, what and, and we talked just before, and we're, we're going to get into this, how Mojo, it's a daily thing. It's a lifetime thing in terms of it's always ebbs and flows. But have there been, I mean, times in your life maybe where you've recognised um, more long term or symptomatically that your, your mojo has has been lower? And, and what have you done about that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I mean, as you, as you rightly say, I, I think mojo is constantly in flux depending on kind of, um, you know, your life situation, the way that you process that. Um, but as you say, sometimes you can just you can sort yourself out. I mean, yesterday I needed a bit of a boost of energy and I jumped 
in some cold water with my wife. And um, guess what? Mojo was back very, very quickly. And that's a short term <laughs> fix. Sometimes yeah. it's, it, it is um, a bit more present because of the life situation that you've got into. And I've certainly had that experience. I mean, one, one that comes to mind, um, I was working well on a, a big brand. I was running Carling Black Label at the time. Um, I should have been delighted because we won brand of the year. I had a massive budget. I was very young. Uh, we were the first billion pound brand in, in the UK. Um, you know, I was on the fast track program. It, you know, I should have been whoop de doo But I had this growing sense of my mojo decreasing over time. And, and it took me a long time to actually work it out, truth be told, because I, I think often when we get in a pickle, it creeps up on us over months. It doesn't just happen um, in a day. And it, that was certainly my experience. And I, it felt to me, I would describe it like I had this itch. I had an itch that I needed to scratch, but I had no idea what it was or why I needed to scratch it or how indeed to scratch it. Um, and, and actually what I ended up doing was I just noticed my energy had dropped so much that I actually ended up jacking the whole job in and going traveling and, and you know, just trying to work out what it was that got me jumping out of bed every day, loving who I was, really using my talents in a way that I thought was useful. And actually, if I go back into it now, and I think, well, what was that itch? What was it that caused my mojo to drop? It was that actually it was a bit of a lack of purpose. And what I realized was making money through brands was not something that really excited me. I, I'm interested in people, helping them live more extraordinary lives. And actually, although you know, making ads and sponsoring, you know, football, all that stuff sounded very exciting to me when I was young. But once you'd done it for a few years, I realized it was a pretty empty existence for me. And I say for me, because we're all different, right? It just didn't fit mm. my purpose. So, so that was, uh, that was, that was one where I had to take quite drastic action. Literally quit the job, get yeah. out of the country, rediscover self. And, and as you say, purpose as a word yeah. that comes to an awful lot, actually, when I talk to people about Mojo. Yeah, really important. I mean, the, the more work I do on energy with, with organizations, the more I am convinced that people need to align to a purpose. They need to have meaning in their, their work. And, and, and it's really important because actually without meaning in work, you can often lose a lot of meaning in life. A third of our days on this planet are work days. If you're not loving them and you're not doing something that you think is worthwhile, then it's a very hollow existence, I think. So um, helping people tap into that and make sure it shows up on a daily basis is a key way of driving better energy and better mojo. And um, and you say, obviously, that what mojo is for you is very personal. Um, as I said, I'm recognizing a lot of what you're saying actually in, in, in other people. What are your other elements of, you know, what makes up your mojo? What, what defines mojo for you? Well, so the, the way we, we talk about it, we, you know, I, I'm a big believer in energy, right? So when you're saying mojo, I hear energy because for me, when your energy is right, um, you know, work is easy and fun. And when it's not, it's quite the opposite. And I'd say mm. it's the same for life generally. So I, I, I'm all about energy. And um, and energy for me has four main components. If if you're a massive hippie, there are seven, but I, I tend to work with four. And um, and, that, and that's your, your physical energy. Um, so, you know, how is your body feeling right now, and what are you doing to feed it? And when I say feed it, you know, I'm I'm into nutrition, into exercise, into sleep, and also into rest, which is I think is really important because without getting those things right, it's hard to physically show up. Um, obviously, your mental energy is is vital. The way that you process who you are in this very moment and what's important to you um, is, is vital. And obviously these days, our mental energy is often taxed horribly by um, distractions and lack of focus. And also we've got kind of an inbuilt negativity bias. So therefore getting our mental energy right takes some work. Then obviously our emotional energy, um, you know, the, the feelings that we're experiencing at any given point have a big impact on our mojo. You know, sometimes we're feeling, um, you know, a little bit more taxed, a little bit more, stressed out a little bit more you know maybe saddened by what's going on, on this planet and that will impact our mojo first is actually feeling optimistic playful having fun and then lastly the the connectivity piece our spiritual energy so um when we're talking about purpose for me that's part of your spiritual energy your connection to why you're on this planet the values that uh, are, that are important to you and making sure you're showing up and contributing. So, so those are the four: physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Brilliant. And that's I thank you for like you know breaking those down into those four areas that I, I guess you know instinctively probably people may know this is going on, but just having it broken down, I guess that helps people think about if something's not quite right. Is it 
across all my energy or as you say mojo um or is there some particular area that's really uh you know is it is it purely that i'm not getting enough sleep yeah or is it as you say i'm not flip it the other side maybe to to the, the more spiritual am i am i just feeling disconnected from what's going on because of a lack of purpose maybe so really great to to, to break them down into the, into those four areas thank you, you. know I, I find it really useful and the reason being is it's it's a complex dynamic isn't it so so if i say to anybody in britain how are you that the only allowable response is fine um and, <laughs> and, and it's, yes. it's ever present isn't it you know be, and, yeah. and, and the truth is we're never fine there's more stuff going on so unless we can increase our awareness and our sensitivity about our mojo, how can we actually get any choice? So the four work really well for me, although obviously under each one of the four, there's quite a lot of stuff going on as well. Um, mm. So the more you tune yourself into those and the more sensitized you are, then I think the better you get at then making decisions on what you can do differently. And, and as you say, you know, it, it, it's pretty obvious if you're hungover, you just go, my mojo shit, because I drank too much. That's easy. Yeah. It, it gets yeah. more complicated when it's actually, you know, well, you know, what's this emotion that I'm feeling today that's a bit different to yesterday's that actually has bring, brought me down? And actually, when you dig into it, you know, it might be something like loneliness. You know, it, it, it really interesting one. Um, lo- loneliness is going to be one of the biggest issues we have on this planet in the next 20 years. Um, and, and actually, I've, I've found myself at times actually feeling lonely. And I, I couldn't really understand why, because I'm surrounded by people. I've got lovely family and friends. And when you actually get into it, loneliness comes from actually not spending time with people doing meaningful things. Yeah. So, right. and, and actually, the emotion that comes with that might not be one that you're used to. It certainly wasn't one that I was used to. And therefore, you know, when I felt it, I had to dig underneath it and, and do some exploring. And then I realized, do you know what? I was having so many uh, um, transactional relationships as opposed to ones that actually had some depth and some meaning. So um, that's, you know, part of, I think, understanding your mojo, you know, noticing the signals and then playing with them. Absolutely. Knowing what I uh, often now I'm talking to people about their mojo, people are either in my mind setting off an image or someone actually recently, uh, they, they suggested this image of, of an old style graphic equalizer. Yeah. You know, on, on people who actually, you know, when you own music versus, versus just streaming music, but you literally, I know my, my, uh, my equalizer is down in the red and I really need to push that up. So it, I, now I'm, I'm, I love this build of maybe there are these four um, yeah. equalizer levels and it's, it's about maintaining all of them as, as well as you possibly can. Because as you say, you could be physically, oh, I'm, I'm just feeling great. I'm, you know, I'm training a lot. I'm training for a marathon. But then flip it the other side on, on your, your spirituality level is low. And I, I love that. You know, really important what you talk about in terms of loneliness. It's, it's not just about I need to surround myself with as many people as I possibly can. It's the quality yeah. of my time with those people that makes it meaningful. Exactly. And I wouldn't have got into that unless I'd have noticed there was a weird emotion that I was feeling and, mm. and a certain flatness. And, and, and actually, the, the beauty of understanding you know, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual is each one of them can be you know, points of a compass. They can help you understand how you are at any given point, And therefore, they can help you navigate back to where your mojo is at as long as you listen to them well and you're curious and you kind of play with it. And how, so now we've sort of established, okay, the, 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 these four sides. And as you said, some may be easier to spot than others. How can you help people? Or how can people help themselves even better um, spot what's going on with those four states? Well, the first thing I think is, is really important is to create some space for that. So when we're working, you know, 24 seven flat out, as a lot of us do, you don't hear anything to be honest, because, you know, what you're obsessed by is the drug of busyness. And we get really into, you know, just being hyper stimulated all the time. So you won't you won't pick much up when you're like that. Um, you know, you're on or you're off and there's not much in between. So so for me, the key thing is to create some space. W- one thing I love to do, um, which is actually something that's particularly good for my mojo, is to spend the first 10 minutes of, of each day unplugged, so nothing digital. I haven't, you know, I, I wake up, I don't look at anything digital. I go outside for 10 minutes and I just sit quietly. And in doing so, um, it's a really good way to tune into how I am and where I'm at and what my intention for the day is. 
and and actually in doing so um i get way more awareness of where i should be focusing my talents and my efforts to achieve the things that i want to and i can also think about well what do i need to do with the energy that i've got right now because actually when you wake up in the morning you've got this quite pure sense of uh, possibility in who you are and therefore you know if you do wake up and you go outside and go do you know what i just feel like physically i don't have what i need then you can build something in in your day to make sure you get the boost you need but um but it's, 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 it's a discipline of getting space. And, and I'm a big believer in, in, in doing that at the beginning of the day. I'm a massive believer in doing that at lunch times. Um, mm. you know, it's amazing how many people work through their lunch time. And, and actually, your, your lunch hour is the equivalent of five and a bit weeks holiday a year, and, you know, which is <laughs> oh God. It's astonishing when you think about it. <laughs> and people just give it away. They just give yes. it away. But obviously, if you take that time to nurture you, you've got more of a chance to get good energy for the afternoon. Um, and we've, we've been doing a lot of energy experiments over the last um, 13, 14 months now. And we had um, a, a, great, a great guy coaching us on sleep. And one of the things we realized is that we're, we, you know, we're quite obsessed with this monophasic sleeping. Um, and actually, we're designed for polyphasic, i.e. sleeping more than once a day. And I've got into napping, Richard. I, oh, ab- well, I was going to ask you what those two words meant, but oh. now you think napping is one of my favorite things. <laughs> it's brilliant. So, so actually, during a lunch break, we, we run workshops on energy. And, um, and at lunchtime, we say, by the way, guys, if, if there's anybody out there that hasn't done napping or feel that they should, you know, over this lunch, you know, we've got an hour and 15 minutes, go crash. The number of times I will find five people in my TV room, you know, with their eyes closed, um, having a little nap and then coming back looking like a, a, as if they, they're totally rejuvenated because actually just, you know, 10, 15 minutes of relaxing over lunch can make a huge difference to your energy. So uh, that's one thing I love to do. Well, I was, I was going to say, is there, is there a minimum amount of time that you can take from a nap that saying 10 or 15 minutes can be, can be helpful and rejuvenating? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really lucky. I, I seem to be able to nap pretty much anywhere. Um, and I've also really lucky because I've got a way uh, that's almost inbuilt now of waking myself up before 20 minutes. And what I tend to find is if I'm very jet lagged, I might, I might break that. And if I go beyond 20 minutes, what happens is you go all the way down into Delta and Delta is kind of yeah. deep dreamless sleep. It's coma state and coming back from that can leave you groggy. So, um, so my, my top tip would be do it, do it for, you know, 20 minutes max. And actually you'll get a boost because you'll get enough into theta to actually de-stress quite a bit and make sense of the morning. So, so that's, that's what works for me. I love that, that sweet spot of, of, of 10 to 15 minutes. Now, yeah. I, and I don't know if this is an urban myth, but you know, I, I live in Spain. The Spanish are renowned, well, historically at least, for their, for their siestas, yeah. which is, you know, can be a very long lunch, but there is, a, there is a nap involved in that. So, you know, kind of look who's doing things right. Is it us work-focused Northern Europeans or, uh, or the Southern Europeans? But I, I have heard it said that in days gone by, the, um, the Spanish might put, a, as it was, a peseta coin on their head. And what would wake them up is that instinct when you when you're sort of when you nod a bit, maybe after about 10 or 15 minutes of sleeping, the peseta coin would hit the floor and wake the person up. So I don't know if that's utter nonsense well, or, that's... or a genius hack. Well, interestingly, I mean, that's what Thomas Edison used to do when he was um, inventing. Because he knew that if he went into um, theta state, he would get more uh, subconscious genius out. So he used to put the coin between his knees um, with his feet over a tin plate. And he'd get all that inspiration, which you get, you know, when you're in a light sleep state. But if you go into delta, you lose body consciousness. So his knees would open, it would hit the, the plate, and he'd wake up and write down what he was thinking about. So that, you know, that, and that's where the, the expression, the penny has dropped, comes from. No way. Yeah. Oh. So, so there's, something, there's something going on with the Spaniards and Edison, there's no doubt. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to need to dig into whether my Spanish story is legit, but I, <laughs> I did hear it from a good source. So. It is now. It's on a podcast. <laughs> Fabulous. So, so that sort of that napping sleep um, is super useful for us. And, I, 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 you know, we, you were talking a bit about um, lunching and especially that you know, five and a half weeks holiday yeah. equivalent. And when I... I spent a long time, um, you know, like you working in the, in, in the corporate existence and that almost that the idea of taking your full lunch hour just seen as something very, you know, not the done thing. Yeah. People working through lunch. It was kind of there's, a, there's certainly a machoism, I think, yeah. about that. Do you, do you think there's a way that um, companies can rediscover 
the, the, the benefits of having a proper lunch? What's going on there oh, at the moment? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Look, I mean, if you, if you go back um, 15, 20 years when I started to do this type of work, um, if you think about how far we've evolved in that time, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, 15, 20 years ago, it was a badge of honor to get off a red eye from New York, go straight into a board meeting, you know, uh, power through until 10 o'clock at night, then have a few martinis, you know, with the team, da, da, and then, you know, do it all again. And, and that was seen as the way that you were successful. And actually what you just needed to be is amazingly tenacious and be able to kind of physically power through. Now, the, these days, most senior people that I work with are triathletes. You know, they're, they're, they're very careful about what they eat. They don't drink, most of them. They have to get their eight and a half hours sleep a night or they're not playing. You know, they really look after themselves in a very different way. And they're leading that from the top. Um, and, and, and I think it's, it's, it's a great thing to see because what they're, they're realizing is actually work is part of life. It isn't life itself. And actually, by you know depleting your energy levels, you know it means that every time you go on holiday, you fall apart for the first few days. I mean, the number of people who used to go on holiday and come back with the flu, it was ridiculous because they were so run down. Whereas now, people go on holiday and actually they get something back from it. Um, so, so yes, I think it's very easy for people to now get more of the investment on the right stuff. And people know that lunch breaks are important. We know that if people lunch with their colleagues, they are going to be, I think it's around 30% more engaged in their business, a statistic that I read recently. So yeah. we, we know that there's a huge um, uh, benefit to doing that. We also know that they, they are going to be better in times of change because they will feel more supported. They'll have deeper relationships. They'll be less lonely, as well as thinking about the fact that they've taken a space from their work, which helps them reflect and re-energize. So, yeah. you know, I don't know any CEOs on the planet who is going to disagree that that isn't a good thing for their workforce to do. But mm. what I think in the past has been the issue is that no one's role modeled it. And, um, and, right, I, and I'm certainly right. working with more senior people now who are saying, no, that is, that's a part of what we should be doing as our culture. Um, I, I know organizations that send people away from their desk. And actually, if they catch anyone at a lunch break sitting at their desk, they boot them out, um, which, which is a slightly kind of, you know, policey way of doing things. But I think yeah. the is good. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's changing. It's definitely changing. But I think this, for me, there's something about obviously the physical environment has a huge impact on on just on how we are in our behaviours. Yeah. And you know, in the days gone by, obviously a long time ago, we'd have had you know the, the the work canteen. Yeah. And now in in you know with with office space being just so expensive, it just seems that having those places to go and have communal food just just seems to be less of a priority. So. It would be wonderful if organizations could invest in that space where people could actually sit and be together, like you're saying, and get that benefit. Yeah, well, I mean, some people do, don't they? I mean, people like Google invest, you know, allegedly oh, yes. millions and millions and millions. In, um, they've got a few quid. They've yeah, got they, a few quid for that. They've got, they've got all of our money, let's face it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they invest very heavily in making sure that food's available um, so that, you know, there is a bit more of that community. I mean, the cynic always says, well, that means that people can spend more time in the office. but but actually, there there is something that um, that I think is very good about um, feeding a bit of humanity, quite quite literally. You know, mm. looking after people physically in their work environment with great nutrition, where they can actually hang out socially with 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 people that they work with, has to be a benefit. Now, yeah. I, now I wouldn't say you have to do it every day. I think it's important to get out as well because we know that, yeah. as you say, your environment is it's about it's a rich source of stimulus. So if you go to the same place for lunch every day, before long you're living on autopilot and you won't necessarily be as consciously connected with some of the things around you that you could be, but but it's great to have that as a resource. There's no doubt. Yeah, I, th I think if you uh, if you closed Pret a Manger for one day, certainly in central London, most people would be absolutely spun out by that and get incredibly <laughs> creative by having to go somewhere else. What for to do? Oh, don't worry, there's it too. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> all of those those sort of mid-level eateries, just yeah, close yeah, them all yeah. for a day and just see what happens to people. Yeah. Anyway, I, I digress. But Chris, on these, because the the energy experiments, I know you and Jim um, from Up in Your Elvis have been running those across all of last year. So we've talked a yeah. bit about, obviously, the, the sleep one. I'm, I'm sure some food was in there. What are the other ones have you found to be just the most impactful f for you and, and maybe for clients as well? Um, so, well, interestingly, um, f for me, we, 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 we teamed up with the one year, no beer guys, um, and the feedback that we've had from everyone and what we've experienced ourselves from not drinking is massive. 
And I, you know, I, and I've been doing this for a couple of years now, where I've been taking you know good chunks of the year off alcohol. But you know, stepping away from what is basically a poison, um, and it becomes quite an insidious habit, which we don't really question. Um, and just noticing the difference that makes on your energy, I think, is massive. Um, and it's not it's not just that obviously. Um, you know, you're more tired when you drink and obviously it's not good for you physically, but but actually mentally it has a huge impact on your positivity uh, or in that case, when you're drinking, you become more negative. So so that was a great one. Um, you know, I, I, I every now and again, I, I'll drink now, but I, I generally am a non-drinker because it's such a massive boost. There's very little to be said for drinking, truth be told, apart mm. from, you know, it's a laugh. Um, beyond that, um, you know, everything else I think is quite negative. So that, that yeah. was fun. Yeah, I guess what I was going to say, because is, is there, the, you know, within within drinking, we know how uh, certainly in certain cultures, it, it's conviviality, it brings people together. It is, as you say, it's it's the laugh. Yeah. Is, do you, are you missing out on anything by by not drinking? Is it, is it you know, socially acceptable not to have the drink? It's amazing how many people, um, I, and I know that I've inspired a few people to do this, um, we just don't do it anymore. We, we, you know, a lot of my mates, you know, and I have got fantastic non-alcoholic beer cellars that have got really good drinks in them. Um, and, and you know what? You, you don't really miss the flavor of alcohol after a while. Uh, you know, a nice glass of red with a roast lamb on occasion. But, you know, you can still do that. That's not the end of the world. The, the key thing is that you just break out the habit of going, that's what I do when I'm having fun. And, and I might go to bed a couple of hours earlier. But you know what? I'm up a couple of hours earlier as well, loving my, my Saturday, Sunday. So... <laughs> Um, what you get back from it is is well worth it. So no, I I don't I don't think you, you do miss it. I think what the, the problem with it is it becomes one of those things that you think you can only have fun when when you got a drink in your hand, and it's just rubbish. It's just rubbish. You just need a few nights out to realise that, and um and and after a while you realise actually as as a slightly drunken person you're a bit of a bore most of the time. It's, it always tends to be about you. <laughs> I'm a lot more interested <laughs> in other people now. That's for sure. So less drinking, more productive, and, and just yeah. more of that, well, that lovely empathy and, and listening going on. Exactly. But yeah, that, that's a winner. I think a lot of the nutrition stuff's good. A lot of the exercise stuff has been good. Um, digital detox, absolute winner. I had no idea how addicted I was to the world of the digital. Um, right. And the simplest things make a difference. Well, well all, we, all we did um, on, on, on this one, I mean, well, we did numerous things, but one of the things that had the most impact I just looked at the things that distracted me the most and put them on the back page of my of my um, uh, of my phone, and my um, right. my time on things like Instagram and LinkedIn and that it, it dropped by eighty percent by moving your apps right just, to that back just by moving to the back. page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, getting rid Brilliant. of notifications and all that rubbish as well. Yeah, um, I got rid of Facebook years ago, so that doesn't bother me. But um, but you know, simple things like that that make a, a massive difference, and also. You know, zoning email, just looking at email three times a day or, or two times a day, most of the time when I'm in the office, um, instead of looking at it constantly every time something comes in. Things like that make a massive difference to your energy and actually your focus and the work that you do. Um, so really enjoy that. But, but there hasn't been an energy experiment really where we haven't had a boost. So what I love about it is that, um, that you know, as human beings, we have this ridiculous ability to play with our energy and and actually you know we can play tunes on it in so many different ways when we you know understand what good energy feels like versus bad and when we get a realization that good energy is such a game changer um so you know there hasn't been one that we haven't enjoyed i mean veganism was a bit of a struggle last month but um well, but you we, just mentioned uh, yeah. roast lamb, so that, yeah, exactly. how did that go? <laughs> it, it was it was a bit tougher, I have to say, but um, but you know, we, you know, again, that you can you can feel a benefit for doing it, and actually, we're just a lot more aware of what we eat and how we eat. Um, and, and a lot of, a lot of time with these experiments, what's interesting, Richard, is that you know you, you do them quite extreme for thirty days. Uh, you, you know, some of them stick forever. I mean, so the the the, the drinking one, you know, is, has been one that has certainly held on. It's not that I don't drink, but I don't drink very regularly. Um, but but a, a lot of them, you, what you'll do is you'll just take the principles of it and apply it to life when it feels appropriate to you. Um, you know, exercise is always stuck. Napping is always stuck. There's a few digital detox. Why would you do anything different? But um, but but there there are some that you just you know ring different tunes on when it's appropriate. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a truism, but balance seems to be the key to a lot of happiness. 
in life. Yeah. So if you're taking the best bits from all these experiments and, as you say, just like balancing off areas in your life which allow you to then push up those those lovely mojo levels, those energy levels, it sounds yeah. like a win. Yeah, it's, and, and, and I, I suppose the, th- the thing for me about it is you can do anything you want as long as you're aware, as long as you wake up. And and we spend so much of our life on autopilot. We're, we're often just, just powering through, just working harder, just looking to the next weekend or the next holiday. And what I love about these energy experiments is they, they the design of them is such that you have to become more aware of where your energy is at and what influences it. And in doing so, you just get way more choice. Um, and also your standards go up because you just don't want a shitty day. And w- w- and are the energy experiments, so that, that was all of last year. Is it continuing to this year? It How is, many, yeah. Many, yeah. Yeah. So so the, we obviously we had uh, Veganery, um, which we did, we did with those guys um, last month. This month we're doing um, Courage with the guys over in San Francisco, Be Courageous, which is all about oh, making sure you do a brave thing every day, which has been great, actually, because oh, wow. it's um, – it's really made me question bravery (laughs) because actually I've realized that I don't have to be very brave in much of what I do, um, which isn't good. Um, So, you know, jumping in cold water every day after a while doesn't become very brave, does it? Um, And and I think often we we do, we do a lot of physical things that are brave, but we don't necessarily push ourselves emotionally, potentially. Um, We don't necessarily take lots of risk around the way that we think. Um, or indeed the way that we add value to the world, and it's, it's uh, that's a really it's been a really fun one actually, but it's very different, yeah. deliverable compared to, for example, napping. Um, so that's why I quite like about it. Yeah, and and, and, and that's the, the beauty of energy. We all of these different things will be impacting us just in very different ways, um, and therefore, again, when you're looking at those equalizers, you've got some very interesting things you can do to tune yourself up. So that's so that's the plan on the energy experiments for the rest of this year in terms of you know what you're doing with upping your elvis and i know you run the charity street wisdom um what else have you got on your agenda for this year yeah so so i don't run street wisdom anymore i was i was one of the co-founders um but david pearl is at the helm of that and doing an amazing job uh we we, we've got um talk it out which is our charity now um right right which, which is which is probably my biggest focus this year um because i think it's got an opportunity to really make a big dent in some of the suffering that goes on on this planet at scale um and it's a very simple talking technique which is based in very good therapy and we've got a way to do it digitally which um could be extraordinary so we're talking to you know as many different um, ai providers that we can right now we're, we're doing a hackathon in two weeks to build a, a kind of proof of concept um but the idea is that you could have something on your phone that you talk to in a stream of consciousness just to get stuff out of your subconscious so you understand why you're feeling how you're feeling. Because often, you know, a bit like me, I, I had this emotion. I didn't know that it was loneliness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually what you need to do is you need a way of processing to connect in with your feeling to understand what you're thinking that's driving that emotion. And, wh- and what Talk It Out does is it takes that out of the darkness and brings it into the light, which makes people feel fantastic. So we've researched it with the University of Bristol and we know that it reduces anxiety and makes people happier. So our big mission is to get it out into as many people's lives as possible. So that's that's a big focus. Brilliant. So that's something that's, as you say, it's kind of in in beta, as it were, at the moment, or in build, and that will be coming at some point soon. Yeah, the digital version, yeah. The analog version is available now. People can find it on talkitout.org, um, and you can just grab a buddy and go and do that with, with them, which I encourage people to do because it's a fantastic tool. Uh, it's all for free, so so go fill your boots. Uh, but the digital Brilliant. one will take a bit of developing because um, it involves tech and very clever people. <laughs> and I imagine trying to get those clever people to to do it as this is sounds like it's it's a charitable endeavour for for not too much money. Well, yeah, but do you know what? Um, you know, hackers are fantastic. Um, you know, they they are an interesting breed of people whose brains are the size of planets, but they also want to save this one, and therefore they've got really big hearts. And we have been Great. absolutely bowled over by how brilliant and um and generous they have been in helping so uh, we're eternally grateful well, that's great to hear and I'll, I'll put all the links by the way to to talk it out um on the show notes so people can find out more and i i, I hear you can completely a, a lot of sort of previous guests i've, I've spoken to one who runs a, a walking company one who runs a running company and the common factor there is that you know taking a challenge a problem out for a walk or a run any kind of movement 
you you find amazing solutions to it either kind of in your own head or certainly when you start sharing it with other people and you know the ideas for new businesses that come out of it the ideas for as you say understanding why am i feeling like this yeah that comes out of it are, are transformational yeah no it's massive and we really need to work on it i mean you know if you think there's there's 450 million people on this planet right now with a mental health issue and and 300 million of those won't talk to anyone so if if we can help get that out and help them get you know clear on what the issue is uh, understanding where they can go for help um so they just feel a, a bit less alone and a little bit more in control it's got to be a good use of time right yeah exactly and it sounds like from going straight back to the beginning of our conversation around purpose and your purpose it sounds like this is very much right at the heart of what you're about it is it is yeah i mean you know i will not rest until we've uh, made a big dent in that and um you know every day that i move somewhere forward i go to bed feeling very happy brilliant that's that's great to hear so chris before before i i let you go and thank you so much for your your time and your wisdom today and sharing uh all these tips techniques and, and ways we can view our, our mojo our energy um you've talked a little bit about your daily habits and the yeah. habits actually of other people because obviously you're working with so many people but what else is it you're doing or, or maybe what other three things do you do every day just to know your your mojo is in the best place it can possibly be yeah well so so that that morning routine is is brilliant so the the, the things i missed out on that is i think when you wake up obviously keep away from anything digital um Neck a pint of water with some sea salt in it um, so that you get the electrolytes in to rehydrate. Because when you wake, you're really dehydrated. Do some exercise to get your heart rate up and then sit quietly and think about what your big thing is for that day. That is uh, just a brilliant thing to do. I love that. Um, I'm, a bit, I'm big into intermittent fasting. So um, I don't tend to eat until lunchtime. Um, and, and I try and eat um, you know, relatively early the night before. Because I think your mm. your body just needs to do that detox and fast to uh, to make sure that the energy is right. So I love doing that. Um, I'm I'm big into processing stuff. So I use Talk It Out myself quite regularly, um, and I do writing it out, you know, which is kind of journaling. That 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 is super super useful. And you know, I've spent the whole weekend jumping in out of my pond, which is freezing right now. And um, <laughs> and I've got to say, it's not always that pleasant, but um the impact that it has on my energy is extraordinary and i managed to get my wife in it in the middle of february uh which is no mean feat and i think i've got her addicted so th those are a few things we do <laughs> brilliant as uh, a, a, a lovely list of i love the always get added value from you chris i asked for three i've got about six or seven there so that's wow well, I, I, I always <laughs> i always aim to please richard <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly have today look chris that has been a, a fantastic trip through your mojo the states of energy all these amazing tips and techniques that everybody can apply lots of things that people can find out more about as i say they'll all be in the show notes um so chris barris brown thank you so much for sharing your mojo story with us it's been an absolute pleasure richard thank you so much and um, may your mojo keep on rising I just love that chat with Chris. Uh, and a first, actually, is a remote interview. And I hope you agree the quality was, uh, was actually really good. And frankly, in our new reality of lockdowns and restriction, that's the way things are going to be for the podcast for the foreseeable. So many great takeouts uh, from the conversation with Chris. Obviously, those four states of energy and really being aware of them and thinking about them. Um, I think that awareness piece is really important for me. Where are you and what you need? And when you understand these things, you can really work hard to boost your energy and your mojo. There's so much right now we're not in control of, but what you can control is yourself. I particularly recommend the talk it out technique that Chris talks about. It's something that I use in coaching. So I've included a link to a document which explains how to do this in the show notes. And you can also find out more at talkitout.org, as Chris mentions. You can find out more about Chris's business, Upping Your Elvis, via their website and on his LinkedIn. There's lots of great updates on Instagram as well about their year plus of energy experiments. And I highly recommend Chris's most recent book, Wake Up, Escaping a Life on Autopilot. It's full of insight and really practical techniques. As I said, I hope you enjoy the episode and you get lots out of it. Now more than ever, I truly hope you find helpful and entertaining i'm going to focus on these weekly releases for the podcast um, while i can still 
keep meeting guests remotely and having great conversations. And if you have a minute, please do leave that five-star rating and write a short review. As I said, it all helps to make the podcast more discoverable. So wherever you are and whatever your situation, may your mojo continue to flow.